Hey guys, so today I'm going to be reviewing the AOA Loose Pigments from Shopmissay.com. These are $1 and this one is in the shade Cloak and it is a teal. So I had never tried the AOA Studio pigments before and I thought it was high time that I did. I ordered three of them. I got this one and I got a blue one and a green one and um, I figured I would start with some of the cool shades and then if I like those maybe in the future I might order some of the warm colored ones there's also a white one which in retrospect I should have got that because that could have been um, a real multi-use type one because it could have been used for inner corners, highlights, uh, face highlights. Uh, it, I, I should have got that one. <laughs> so anyways, um, so I've been playing around with this and testing it out. And pigments can be tricky. And they vary so much from brand to brand. And there are um, different ways that they will respond to using them in different ways and using them in conjunction with other products and so I'm just going to tell you the ways that I tried them out and then what happened and then I'm going to show you the way that I feel was the most successful way or the way in which the product worked best and I also read what it said on the website for their recommendations and the method that I'm going to show you I think works better than what the company or the brand themselves is telling you to do. So the first thing that I noticed when I opened the container is this is very, very chunky. And it seems like it has a very unusual texture to it. Um, it isn't dry but it isn't necessarily wet either. It's um, just a very clumpy pigment. And I've I've used a lot of different pigments over the years from different brands, and this one doesn't look like any of the other pigments that I've used. It, it's very, un, very unusual and unique looking. So the first thing I did was I took some of this pigment, pigment and I took a brush and I I brushed some like onto the surface of my hand and it took a ton of blending to get it to blend to look like the way that I wanted it to so you have to really work at this to break it down if you use a brush and the problem with that is it's if you're doing this on your eyes it's going to be like fallout city. Now that can be an issue with pigments anyway, but this would be to the point where you wouldn't even want to use it because the cleanup underneath would be so horrendous. So I don't recommend you do that. So I thought, okay, um, what if we used some type of liquid with it? So I put some pigment on the brush and then I sprayed the brush with a setting spray. I didn't use this one for any particular reason. This is just the one that I grabbed. This is Milani Make It Last setting spray. And when I did that, the strangest thing happened, you guys. I've never seen this in my life. So I put the pigment on the brush. I sprayed the brush, just one spray, just one pump. And then I ran it on the back of my hand and it was stunning it was gorgeous it was beautiful and I waited a little bit of time for the setting spray to set the pigment instead what happened was when it dried it all lifted and pulled up off my hand and turned into flakes I've never seen this before. I don't know why this happened, um, but 
this isn't like an unusual setting spray. It's just, it's a very common spray that a lot of people use. So I was like, okay, can you imagine what a mess that would be on your eyes? If, if the pigment was all flaking and lifting and falling off your face. So I said, okay, this is not the way to go. So the third method of application is what I'm going to show you now. And this was quite successful. And I think you would be very happy with it if you tried it this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the wettest eyeshadow primer that I own, which unfortunately happens to be in studio, in studio cosmetics eye primer. This is a brand that they sold last year at Walmart. It's gone. It's like it's dropped off the face of the earth. It's like they made this brand, this huge end cap that they used to have at Walmart. And then once it sold down, they removed it and it was gone forever. It was, it, it's quite upsetting because this was such a fantastic brand and everything was less than a dollar. And I will treasure the products that I have from them for as long as they stay good um, because the eyeshadows were amazing too. I didn't buy any of the lip or face products because I don't know, they just, they didn't look good to me. But um, anyways, we're getting off track here. So this is the wettest eyeshadow primer that I own. So if you have multiple eyeshadow primers in your collection, you want the one that is the most liquidy. So I'm going to start by priming my eyes with this. See how this looks. It It's quite uh, pigmented, but when you blend it out, the color sort of goes away, but it's like a beige shade. So even if the color stays behind, I don't feel like this is going to be much of an issue for a lot of people. It's color wise. It's kind of like, um, Mac soft ochre, I would say paint pot. So the reason why you want to use a liquidy eyeshadow is because this pigment is dry and doesn't blend that well. So it's going to need some moisture. Okay, so you don't want to wait for that to completely set up. You want to go right in. So what we're going to do is whenever you buy a pigment, there is always a lot of product that ends up on the inside of the cap. That is typical. And we are going to just take our finger and swirl it on the inside of the cap and pick up that pigment. And we're gonna dab it on the eyelid. Now I didn't go in and do the rest of my eye makeup like I normally would because it would have got um, pigment on it in places that I didn't really want it to be. That's inevitable if you're working with your finger. So I figured we could go in and clean up the area that it went on. Okay, so I'm just going to pick up a little bit more and dab it over the areas that that it didn't cling to. So this way you're applying it and blending it at the same time. Now we've got kind of a big mess left behind. So I'm going to clean that up and be right back. Okay, so what I did was I just took a couple of um, cotton swabs and some micellar cleansing water and removed it from the area that I didn't want it to be. Um, there might be just a couple little specks 
left, but that's okay because I want to go in with a different color next. So the next color that I'm going to use is a pressed single eyeshadow from A2O Lab, which is um, the brand of eyeshadow that Shop Missé sells um, of their own pressed single eyeshadows. So this is the shade Terracotta, and I'm going to use an AOA Studio E128 brush. And I don't need to describe the shadow because I think the name is sort of self-explanatory. So we're going to put that in the crease. So we're pretty much doing a teal and terracotta look today. So as I'm blending, the pigment does not seem to be moving around that much. I think if I had done it the other way, the teal would have gone all over the crease area and it just would have been impossible. It would have been a big mess, so I would definitely recommend doing your lid shade first and then going into your crease. Okay, now I'm going to go in with this Profusion Small Firm Eyeshadow Brush. This is the ES4, and I'm going to take some of that terracotta, and I'm going to drag that along the lower lash line and connect it over here to my crease. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Profusion Flat Precise Eyeshadow Brush. This is their ES7. And I'm going to take this AOA Studio Buttercream Gel Liner. And this is in the shade Cupcake. And I'm going to put this on my waterline. So try to pack on a good amount onto the brush. These liners are one dollar and I love them so much. I have in a shop miss another shop miss say order coming and I'm restocking the uh, blueberry is it called blueberry shade the dark teal one and I'm finally getting ganache um, which is a shade I have not been able to try up until now it was always out of stock. Okay, so next I'm going to curl my lashes. And then I'm going to take Milani the Violet One Lash Primer. Wipe off the excess.
Maybelline the Falsies Lash Lift Mascara. Starting with the bottom lashes, just go sideways and sort of wiggle. And then try to get down at the root of your lashes and lift and curl with the top lashes. Okay, so I will do the other eye off camera and be right back. Okay, so next I'm just going to take the highlight that I used on my face. I'm going to use this for the highlight areas on my eyes. This is Revlon Skin Lights Prismatic Highlighter in Daybreak Glimmer. And I'm going to take an AOA Studio High Def Brush in E105. This is a pointed crease brush, but... I like to use this as my highlight because I can get the precision that I want. So we're just going to put that on the brow bone and the inner corner. So, so that is my review slash tutorial on the AOA Studio Loose Pigments, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching.